Developmental Psychology, The Origins of Consciousness. Now before you dis dismiss this as pseudoscience, you should treat it as theoretical and know that others, you know, will come along and, you know, express like express like the theoretical physics into pure mathematics so I'm doing the same thing I'm expressing you know a theory an understanding but with a consequent structure you know which I've outlined, outlined in my other videos on developmental psychology you know there's the beginner's mind and there's the you know developmental psychology the first one it, it's as well but here the, we have the origins of mind the origins of mind well the first problem is that the origin of mind is in the dark energy or is in the transcendental we think or we've been taught in evolutionary theory that the origins of mind is in matter, in atoms. So this is, you know, if you like, the opposite theory, that the origins of mind arise in the dark matter, in, sorry, in the dark energy, in the transcendental. So the transcendental, you know, it's got an energy, dark energy. And we have this equation, which I think of the equation of the vanishing point. The vanishing point, you know, the, the origin. E to the i pi plus 1 equals 0 e for like the entropy in the system you know the exponential to the powers the dimensions of the imagination and space plus 1 equals 0 is a, is the void or and I wrote this the wrong way around but 1 is equal to minus e to the i pi so 1 you know, the singularity is equal to minus e to the i pi. I pi. So this, so while this is real, this, this is not real. While this is real, that's not real. You know, the reality of this projection of the singularity. There's a singularity, there's the projection. If the projection is real, then the singularity is not real. The singularity is negative. And there's the projection, all the energy to the dimensions of the imagination and spaces. So it's all, so it's the entire entropy in the system and all the imagination and all the possible spaces that you can conceive of, the, the whole projection. E to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Now, So it starts from this vanishing point, from this origin, and then it grows from that. As I say, other people, other mathematicians will explain what this means. So we have these four. In the Prajna Upanishad it says that I, the prana, divides myself into four, into four, four. The I, the imaginary one, which is equal to the square root of minus one. So this is like Schrodinger's cat. It contains the possibility of both existing and not existing. So this I is the superposition. And I say that there is a superpixel at the superposition. There's a synesthetic superpixel at the superposition. 
but we'll get on to that. So there we have it. I equals the square root of minus one. So it can, it's the superpositions. It can either be real or not real. We can, it can be just an idea in mind, or it can be there in reality. Now, there we have the point. Now, the, as we move in and out of focus, that point creates that circle. So, you, so that movement is a function of pi, a transcendental number. You know, that we cannot, we can't understand the, the dark energy. We can't understand the, the values of the transcendentals apart from through this equation into the vanishing point. And as I say, you've got to see that not going into the vanishing point, but this is like coming out the relationship between these four and the structure, the origin of mind, of consciousness, is in the structure of those four transcendentals, and the, the I, pi. Now, obviously, there's the point moving, so we get the sense of movement. And the image... Right, it fades. It's transitory. It's just an image on the screen. It's not a permanent fixed piece of paint. It fades. There's entropy in the system. And this is a transcendental. It's set in the value somehow. You know what I mean? I'm just saying how it is. I'm saying how it is. The value for the decay in the image is a function of E, the exponential, the transcendental number. Now, obviously, we need to go back a stage to this mysterious one, phi, the golden mean. And you see, there's actually a connection between these, a connection between between these four. So from I to moving, is a function. And there we have the I, I seeing the harmony. So, so the I sees the light. This is the creation of light. Let there be light is that relationship between the imaginary point and phi. And God saw that it was good. It was harmonious. You know, it was the golden mean, the golden section, nature, the Fibonacci series, the Sabhava Dhamma, the becoming of its own, Narayan, the heart. So there is the basic structure of our consciousness. The eye that sees the point move and that image decays. We have the creation of light and the point there because obviously in eye, in the dark energy is an infinite number of points. But apparently we can manage with 500 pixels. Not a lot, is it? Rice has more genes than we have. So there we have from the vanishing point to these four transcendental values. And then they generate the image we see and you know, if you like the, the senses and I've got to this so the eye becomes the point and when the child's born it looks for the breast the nipple in the center of the circle you know the the, the, my, the consciousness comes from that vanishing point into the circle and obviously the decay, these three. So it, 
there we have what, what is called the Isakawa entoptic, or the signal entoptic, or the breast entoptic. So the point, that's the point in our visual field, in our conception of reality, in our image, in our projection of reality. And there we have the point moving to create a line, which is the first dimension. The line moves and creates a surface. So the point moving creates this idea of movement, this vision of movement, which we see often as tunnels. The consequences of action, you know, going down the pan, the tunnels from that point moving, just the movement. And that movement endures and becomes the, the face, a surface. And that, as I said, this in the child becomes the breast, this is the child. And then there's the face of the mother. So it identifies with the mother. Then the mother can control the child's access to the breast. And there's the father, the movement, the coming and going. That's in the, you know, the psychology of the child. Now, so there's the eye, see an eyebrow and an eye, seeing light, seeing the point, seeing the point move, seeing the surfaces. So we actually see in two dimensions. Two dimensions. So we have one function based on seeing movement and that grows into the left hemisphere where there's a speech center to describe movement. Okay, look at that, kangaroo. That grows into the left hemisphere. Then we've got the right hemisphere where we recognize faces. We have our music center where we calm. There's our eternal inner self, the unchanging. There we have the child, the I, you know, the baby, the ego. So there's the spirit, the love that unites us all. There's the father, the mother, and the child. There's the I, seeing the point, seeing the movement. And that developing into the left hemisphere and you know paranoia in you know, actions movements or there's the faces so that's the right hemisphere where it develops into schizophrenia hearing voices identifying those voices with faces so we've got the paranoia, schizophrenia, and then here we have the heart, the desire for integrity, for harmony, the I, you know, the driver, the ego, all come from this, from phi, from phi. From this one. First one in the series. With all these points, this is our imagination from I. This creates mania because we have too many possibilities, there's too many imagined universes. You see, there are all these multiverses in our mind, in our imagination, or we can just be, if you like, self-centered in our heart and have no, no words and no actions. You see, this is words, we associate words with faces and actions with movement. Words with faces action with movement so we're, we're, and so that this is because mania this is depression 
when there's no words and no action. Too many actions, paranoia. Too many words, schizophrenia. Too many words that aren't understood, and you know, like Mrs. Lang. This is the origins of consciousness. Thank you.